Filipino suffers an injury at the World Championships. Should he have even been playing in that tournament in the first place? Plus, Brent Othman wins an OHL championship. Former New York Ranger Vitaly Krasov signs with the KHL. And the Rangers will play an outdoor game next season in February. All this and much more on today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 835 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, and we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And to kick things off here today, I mentioned, you know, Philip Heedle's suffering an injury while competing in the World Championships. We haven't really talked a whole lot about the World Championships thus far. You know, the preliminary round is about to wrap up, and... The Rangers only have two players competing in it, which is now down to one due to the injury to Philip Hedl. But obviously, Philip Hedl has been playing, and uh, Hedl playing for Czechia, and Capo Caco playing for Finland. But I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about that tournament today, talking about the injury to Philip Hedl, talk about Capo Caco, and how he's fared uh, thus far in this tournament. But yeah, kind of the, the headline grabber here, the most important aspect of uh, this entire thing is the fact that Philip Hedl, once again, was injured during the preliminary round of the World Championships. He has what's being called as a facial injury. It is believed to be a fractured cheekbone after he caught a stick to the face uh, in Czechia's second game of the tournament. And Philip Hedl currently at home in Czechia. Uh, as far as Philip Hedl and what he did this season for the Rangers, I mean, you guys know the story. It was a breakout season of sorts for Philip Hedl, the former first-round draft pick by the New York Rangers. Smash career highs across the board. Uh, career high 22 goals, career high 23 assists, career high 45 points. Uh, he also had a goal and three assists in seven playoff games and was rewarded with an in-season contract extension four years at $4.44 million per season. As far as this injury is concerned in the World Championships, uh, the Rangers are basically saying that it will not have any impact or is not expected to have any impact on Philip Hedl as far as the upcoming you know, regular season, preseason, offseason, training camp, the whole nine yards, he is expected to be good to go. And in typical, not just Ranger fashion, but in typical NHL fashion when it comes to these injuries, uh, they have referred to it, have the Rangers, as, what else, an upper body injury. And uh, that's definitely an interesting way to classify, you know, what is believed to be a fractured cheekbone, an upper body injury. But be that as it may, uh, Filipino, like I said, only played one game, one full game, and then uh, part of a second game, he ends up with just one assist and was a plus one in those two games. And obviously his run was cut very short due to injury. And uh, by all accounts, it sounds like he's not going to be suiting up again uh, for the rest of this tournament here. But Philip Hedl does seem to be in pretty good spirits. You know, he made a post on Instagram, which, you know, I didn't translate this myself. Somebody else translated this uh, to English and roughly translated the Instagram post reads as follows from Philip Hedl. After being eliminated from this year's playoffs, which still annoys me about how it turned out, I did not hesitate to join the national team. I believe that I could help the team to achieve one of the medals after a year, preferably the most valuable one. I'm very sad that I only managed to play in one full match and one third of the next one. I was hoping that the injury I suffered wasn't so serious and I could continue the tournament further. I have done my best to get back into the game, but unfortunately, it got to a point where I knew it can't go anymore. Nevertheless, thank you all for your support, and I continue to cheer for the guys. You know, I talked about this in the intro, but as far as the decision for Filipino to play in this tournament, it's completely fine. I, I know there's going to be some people that look at this and say, oh, you know, it's just a meaningless tournament. It's this, it's that. His priority uh, should be with his New York Ranger career, his NHL career, and getting ready for the upcoming season. Uh, competing in this tournament is a way for Filipino to do just that, to get ready for the upcoming season. Uh, I like the fact that the Rangers has somebody in Filipino who just got paid, you know, just got a really nice contract extension for himself. I believe it totals... Uh, let's see, doing some quick math here, uh, just shy of, what would that be, like $18 million per season over four years at 4.4 a pop. I'm pretty sure that's right. Again, doing some quick math. Um, but yeah, I mean, th this is somebody that just got paid, and it'd be very easy for him to just rest on his laurels, you go home, kick back, and just kind of relax for the offseason. And if you wanted to do that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that either, as long as he shows up for training camp, you know, in shape and ready to go. Um, but the fact that he wants to just keep continuing to play hockey after the Rangers were eliminated, continue to hone his craft, continue to try to get better. I mean, give me that guy all day as opposed to the guy who 
doesn't really want to be bothered with any of that, you know, when the season ends. It'd be very easy for Philip Heedle to not play in this tournament. Uh, he wanted to do it, and I'm sure for Heedle and anybody else that plays in this tournament, there's an appeal to represent your country. You know, Philip Heedle's getting to play for Team Czechia here, and I'm sure that's an honor that he does not take lightly, and uh, it's something that he wanted to do. So who am I to say no? Who are any of us to say no? And... You know, again, you can get hurt doing anything related to hockey. You can get hurt in the weight room. You can get hurt uh, during training camp. You can get hurt going to your mailbox to get your mail. It can happen. Uh, it's unfortunate that this happened to Philip Heedle. The good news is that it sounds like, uh, well, A, that he's in good spirits, and B, that he should be good to go uh, for this upcoming season for the New York Rangers. This is according to the Rangers, and there's times where they tend to kind of undershoot their uh, timetable as far as, you know, return from injury is concerned. But uh, nevertheless, I, I do think this sounds like a pretty positive outlook for Philip Heedle. Uh, unfortunate that he can't continue in this tournament, but the good news once again being uh, that he should be ready to go uh, for the upcoming New York Ranger season. As far as Capo Caco at the World Championships, he's still playing for Team Finland. Uh, in the six games that he's played, he has one goal and three assists. He's also a minus one in that time. Finland right now lines up to play Canada in the quarterfinals, and the quarterfinals of this tournament start on Thursday. Uh, the preliminary round will actually be over by the time that this episode drops, and then the quarterfinals onward, it's all single elimination after that. But it's kind of the same deal uh, with Filipino. I'm glad that Capo Caco, once again, has the drive, has the commitment, has the passion for hockey that he wants to play in a tournament like this. And it's unfortunate because, you know, if this was last season, the Rangers would still be playing hockey right now. And of course, that would mean that neither Heedle nor Caco nor anybody else on the Rangers would even be thinking about this tournament. Uh, they'd be playing for the Rangers in a high-stakes Eastern Conference final playoff series. Uh, but obviously, that's not the case. And uh, Caco and Heedle taking it upon themselves to play in this tournament Again, continue to hone their craft, continue to try to get better and uh, in a roundabout way, get ready for the upcoming season. And again, uh, if these guys want to represent their country on a world stage, uh, who am I to say no to that? Um, and again, to me, it's just something that never really hurts. You know, it's more hockey. And uh, again, for, for Cabo Caco and Filipino, I'm, I'm sure that they really uh, enjoy this opportunity. And as for Caco with the Rangers this year, best season of his career, career high, in games with 82, played all 82, uh, career-high 22 goals, career-high 18 assists, career-high 40 points, uh, just one goal and one assist in seven playoff games. He is about to enter the final season of his two-year bridge deal that pays him $2.1 million per season. Uh, after this upcoming season for the Rangers, Capo Caco will be a restricted free agent with arbitration rights. And obviously, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, I would imagine that uh, Capo Caco, though, going to be back with the Rangers this upcoming season. There's always rumors and there's always ideas like, you know, could they move on from one of the kids? You know, could one of them get traded? Could the Rangers uh, trade a veteran? Would one of the star players uh, wave a no-move clause and, and, you know, go somewhere else? I still think Capo Caco is back with the Rangers uh, for this upcoming season. And again, he is somebody that continues to get better. Uh, the thing that really stood out for me, for Capo Caco this year, is uh, he's just a beast when it comes to uh, maintaining possession of the puck in the offensive zone. He does that as well or better, I think, uh, as anybody on the Rangers. And for this upcoming season, I'm not to get too far ahead of ourselves here, but I'd almost like to see a top line for the Rangers of Mika Zibanejad centering Alexi Lafreniere on the left wing, Capo Caco on the right wing. Uh, Caco, and you could go with Kreider instead of Lafreniere if you want there, but bottom line, when Caco was on that top line, uh, he did very well with that opportunity. Eventually, you know, it felt like the Rangers always wanted to go back to that kid line, which eventually they did, but we got, you know, a handful of games. It was maybe only about four games or so, um, you know, kind of in the middle of the season, I want to say, where that was the top line, left to right, Lafreniere, Mika, Caco. I thought they looked pretty good together, and, um, you know, just uh, take advantage of the fact that Mika Zibanejad can play with anybody go back to a line that seemed to click a little bit and see if you can't get these kids uh, into high gear for the New York Rangers. Whoever the next coach is for this Rangers, and I've said this in the past, uh, at the near the top of the list of his priorities, I mean, priority number one is always winning and ultimately winning a championship, but right there near the top is going to be uh, getting these kids to the next level. They, they've taken baby steps forwards every single season, and as I've said in the past, we don't need baby steps next year. We need a hop, skip, and a leap forward for Kako, Hedl, Lafreniere, the whole nine yards. And like I said, I, I do like the fact that Hedl and, and Kako took it upon themselves to play in this tournament. Obviously, it didn't go so well for Philip Hedl with the injury, um, but be that as it may, uh, you know, I, I like to see the guys take the initiative uh, like that. And all the best to Capo Caco as he continues onward uh, in this tournament. 
We're going to keep everything rolling in just a second. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff we want to get to today. Definitely want to talk about Brennan Offman and uh, give him congratulations for his OHL championship. Going to do a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Talk about the Rangers playing an outdoor game next season. And we'll get to all that good stuff in just a second. But first, we do have to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Everybody looks better and feels better when wearing bird dogs. Their stretchy fabric makes my legs look great and they are comfier than all my other shorts and pants. And I should know because a pair, a couple pairs of bird dogs just got here in the mail last week. They were nice enough to uh, send out a sample and they're awesome. You know, I can't really see myself ever going back to any other kind of jeans, any other kind of shorts, uh, whatever it might be. I think this is the way to go for me going forward. They give me the freedom to wear one pair of shorts or pants on the Frisbee golf course to a meeting, a date with my wife, or hang out with my friends. Bert Crusher wakes up at his lake house wearing bird dogs. He goes for a swim. He grows a burger. He chills with his family, all in the shorts that he associates with the summer, and that would, of course, be bird dogs. College football nerds say they are the perfect pants for dads that have a little extra gut. Bird dogs make them look great, and they make them feel comfortable. Part of my take host, PFT, famously never wears pants, and the only shorts he truly loves are bird dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNHL, and when you enter promo code LockedOnNHL, they will throw in a free custom bird dogs Yeti-style tumbler with every order. Once again, go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL and enter promo code locked on NHL. Right, we just want to thank everybody, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And for the everydayers, make sure you stick around. I want to continue talking about Ranger head coaching candidates. Going forward, we've talked about a lot already. There's more to get to. And like I said, like I've been saying throughout this entire offseason series that uh, has kind of been uh, given to us after the firing of Gerard Gallant, uh, we're going to leave no stone unturned and give everybody a fair trial and see who the, the best fit could be uh, for this New York Ranger team going forward. But for right now, I want to shift our attention to Brent Offman and the Peterborough Peets. They are your 2022-2023 OHL champions. Uh, they defeat the London Knights in six games in the finals. They win game six by a final score of two to one. And Brennan Offman uh, had an assist on the first goal of that game. Uh, London eventually tied it. And then the Peets went on to win it. And uh, once again, Offman and the Peets, now your OHL champions. You know, there's really not a whole lot left for Brennan Offman to do in any league not named the NHL. This guy just sets the world on fire everywhere he plays, puts up video game-like numbers. And... I've been saying all along, I think going into next season, I think we see Will Cooley on the opening night roster. He got a taste of Ranger hockey this past season, obviously played a bunch of games at the Hartford Wolfpack as well, had a very good season there for himself. Uh, I think with Othman, look, it's possible he makes the opening night roster. We don't know how the opening night roster is going to look or uh, who's going to be back next season, who else the Rangers might bring in from around the league. Uh, we'll see how that whole thing shakes out. Offman's got a shot at it. I think the Rangers will definitely give him uh, a long look in the preseason training camp uh, and everything else. But if I was going to bet, I would say they maybe start him in the AHL, and that might uh, also alleviate the fears of certain Ranger fans that they're going to rush him along too fast, they're going to give him too big of a role, and they're going to mess up his development. And I can agree with that to a certain extent. There are times where maybe the Rangers rush their players a little bit. Uh, but with that being said, you know, I, I do think he should be the first call-up. If you need a little bit of a jolt or somebody gets injured or uh, you just feel like, you know, he's doing a great job in the AHL and there's nothing left for him to do there, then why not? You know, promote Brian Offman. I will be stunned. I'm not so sure that he'll make the opening night roster. I will be absolutely stunned if we do not see Brian Offman on the New York Rangers at some point for this upcoming season. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But for the time being, again, just a monster in this playoff run for the Peets. Uh, 23 playoff games for Offman, 8 goals, 17 assists. So 25 points in 23 playoff games for Brian Offman. You know, really watching this tournament, not really watching. I mean, I, I saw clips here and there, and obviously I've been keeping tabs on it, you know, on social media and uh, following the, the team account and just kind of keeping an eye on how, how far the Peterborough Peets and Brian Offman could take this thing. Of course, they end up winning a championship. But it wasn't just the sheer number of points that Offman got. And again, 25 and 23 games, that's, that's big-time hockey right there. He was clutch throughout this entire tournament. And to really illustrate my point here, uh, there was no better example of that than the Eastern Conference Final. They were down three games to two 
in that series, and they were down three games or three goals to two in the third period of game six, obviously facing elimination at that time. Offman ends up with the primary assist on the game tying goal. He also gets the primary assist on the overtime winner. So that forced the game seven, kept the pizza alive. And then Brandon Offman scored a goal in game seven. Uh, in that game seven, that put the pizza up by a score of two to one. They went on to win by a final score of three to two. There was also a video not too long ago. It was the game four win that the pizza had in the uh, finals. This gave them a three to one series lead. Brandon Offman was out there, you know, with, with the one goal lead and uh, the Pete's trying to, to run out the clock basically. And he's got the puck and he's along the boards behind the net and he's taking a beating. Guys are trying to get the puck away from him. He will not give up the puck. Uh, this guy's an absolute beast. I mean, to me, he's the total package. You got talent, you got toughness, uh, clearly a really strong work ethic. It's all there. Uh, Brandon Offman, as far as players that we've kind of uh, seen come along through, through the the junior ranks and uh, possibly the AHL next season. He's up there as far as uh, somebody with, uh, you know, maybe among the most upside of any Ranger prospect that we've seen in recent history. I know people are going to point to Lafreniere and point to Kako, but, you know, they went straight to the NHL. You know, as soon as they were drafted, they were out there with the Rangers uh, the following season. So I'm not really including them in this conversation. As far as guys that have been drafted by the Rangers and kind of uh, gone through the, the ranks here and worked their way toward the NHL, and again, I do think Offman will debut in the NHL this upcoming season. Uh, man, Brandon Offman, it, it's impossible not to get excited about everything that this guy brings to the table. He really is the total package. And now it's just a matter of, uh, you know, developing him, putting him in a position to succeed and him taking care of the rest. Because again, all the, all the pieces are there. Um, again, he, he does look like somebody that doesn't really have any weaknesses in his game. As far as what's next for Brian Offman right now, as well as the Peets, uh, they are about to play in a round robin four team tournament that will determine the champion of the Canadian hockey league. Uh, so you got the Peets who are the OHL champions. You got the Quebec Remparts, they are the QMJHL champs. Uh, you've got the Seattle Thunderbirds, they are the WHL champs. And you've got the Kamloops Blazers of the WHL, they are the host team. And admittedly, I don't really know how this works. I, I saw something where, um, you know, they had a bid to, to host the tournament, and I guess that means they automatically get to play in this four-team round robin, along with the other three league champions. That's what I can gather from this as far as uh, the information I was able to track down here. But bottom line, the tournament, this four-team tournament, will occur in Kamloops, British Columbia. It will run from May 26th through June 4th. Uh, you get a round robin where every team plays every team. The top team from the round robin goes straight to the championship game, which will occur on June 4th. The second and third place team play each other in the semifinal on June 2nd, two days before that. And if a tiebreaker is needed, it will occur one day before that on June 1st. And uh, the winner of that then goes to the semifinal. And then the winner of that semifinal game goes to the championship uh, to face the team that came out of the ro round robin portion uh, as a top team. Hopefully that's not too confusing. It makes sense when you look at it, when you look it up and you see how the, the whole thing is laid out. But I'm definitely looking forward to this. And I got to find out a way to watch these games because obviously I'm missing my Ranger hockey right now. I know I'm not alone there. I know a lot of you guys are missing that also. And, you know, the Stanley Cup playoffs are cool and everything. I, I've been keeping up with that as much as I can. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind checking out the World Championships either and kind of root on uh, Capo Caco. He's playing for Team Finland. And, of course, Brian Offman here uh, going to be playing for the Peets in, uh, you know, the, a chance to be the champion of the uh, the Canadian Hockey League here. So uh, very much looking forward to that and going to try to find a way to watch all these games. If you guys know, uh, I believe the World Championships are on the NHL Network. Um, I have to you know, double-check that now that the preliminary rounds are over. As far as uh, the CHL round robin here that we've got going on, um, yeah, I, I would have to look that one up. So if anybody knows offhand, definitely let me know uh, in the comments. But I wanted to uh, go ahead. We're going to keep everything rolling in just a second. We need to talk about uh, former Ranger Vitaly Krasov heading back to the KHL. We're also going to talk about uh, a rumor that is seemingly now confirmed. It comes from David Pagnotta, Pagnotta excuse me, and that is the story that the Rangers will be playing a game at MetLife Stadium this upcoming season. So we're going to talk about all that good stuff in just a second. But first, we do have to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by eBay Motors. For a championship team, it is all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit 
or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you will be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions do apply. All right, so we'll go ahead and keep everything rolling here. I do want to talk a little bit about uh, now former Ranger and apparently now former Vancouver Canuck, Vitaly Krasov signs a two-year deal with Tractor of the KHL, his old team. He's, he's heading back to the KHL. Uh, I mean, you guys, again, it's another situation where most of you kind of know the story as far as Krasov, the Rangers drafting him ninth overall, and it just never really worked out, just never really got it going in the NHL. I'm not going to go through the entire saga because that would take, like, we'd be here until tomorrow if I did that. Um, but the abbreviated version of this is that, you know, Krasov and the Rangers, just a frosty relationship right from the start, right when he was drafted. Uh, Drury called out Krasov, Krasov left the Whalers, or left the Wolfpack. Wow, flashback there, the Whalers. Um, yeah, left the Wolfpack in the middle of a season, one year. Um, then this, or not this past year, but the one before it, uh, he didn't make the Rangers on opening night. He was going to start the season with the Wolfpack. And so instead of doing so, he leaves, goes back to the KHL. And then finally this past year came back to the Rangers. But again, just never really got it going. 44 career games with the Rangers, only four goals and four assists in that time was a plus three. Uh, he was then traded by the Rangers to the Canucks this season in the middle of the year for just a seventh round draft pick. A seventh round draft pick for somebody that just a handful of years ago went number nine overall in the draft. We are living in a world where Brett Howden can get you a fourth round draft pick. Ryan Reeves can get you a fifth round draft pick. And this kid, who again, a top 10 overall pick, uh, still very young, still in his early 20s. I believe he's 23 now. He can only get you a seventh round pick, but I mean, you couldn't really ask for much more than that. He just hadn't done enough. Uh, his work ethic and his, uh, you know, his overall mindset were both questionable at best. I think that's fair to say. And like I said, it didn't really go a whole lot better uh, when it came to his tenure with the Canucks. 16 games, just one goal and one assist. And look, I don't celebrate any of this. I'm not like rooting for Kraftsoff to fail. I, I don't wish any ill will upon him, even though at times there, you know, he was certainly a little bit immature uh, during his uh, his Ranger tenure. But the amount of like like anger and vitriol that certain Ranger fans had toward the Rangers, not toward Krausov, but toward the Rangers for not gift wrapping him a prominent role, you know, putting him automatically in the top six and putting him on the top power play unit. And by the way, they did put him in the top six for a decent amount of time. He was on the Artemi Panarin line to start the season. He was out there with Panarin and Trocek. And we've seen a lot of just random players play with Artemi Panarin and all see an uptick in production. Everybody from, you know, to, to just name a few, Jesper Foss, Colin Blackwell, Barkley Goodrow, Jimmy Vesey. Vesey just once in a while, I guess. But bottom line, a lot of different players have played with Artemi Panarin, not all of them superstars, and they all see an uptick in production except for Vitaly Krasov. And again, it just did not work out uh, for Krasov and the Rangers. Krasov at least seemed to have a little bit better attitude the second time around, so that was good. And look, all the best to Vitaly Krasov. He's going back to the KHL. Maybe he can find his game there. Maybe he's back in the NHL at a certain point, but it uh, doesn't look like that's going to be happening at the start of this upcoming season at the very least. And then finally, the last thing I want to talk about here today uh, once again, this is per David Pagnotta. The Rangers will play in one of two outdoor games at MetLife Stadium next February. And as far as I can tell, the exact dates have not yet been finalized, but you're going to get Devils versus Flyers on the first of these two days, and they will be back-to-back -back days. It'll be Devils versus Flyers, followed by Rangers versus Islanders the following day. And I would think, you know, off the top of my head, it would probably be a weekend, but this is the NHL, so uh, they'll probably end up doing it on like a Tuesday morning and a Wednesday morning or something like that. Something just ridiculous. Uh, we'll see. But the weekend would seemingly make a little bit more sense. Uh, but you know what? Bottom line, these outdoor games are always fun. Honestly, no matter which teams are playing, uh, they did the game at Lake Tahoe. I believe that was this past season. That was awesome. Just looks so cool there. Uh, just a beautiful setting. Uh, the Rangers in the past have done their fair share of outdoor games. They've twice done the Winter Classic. Uh, they beat the Flyers 3-2 at Citizens Bank Park in 2012. They also beat the Sabres at City Field 3-2 in overtime in 2018. As far as other outdoor games are concerned, uh, the Rangers 
played a pair at Yankee Stadium back in 2014, beat the Devils 7-3, and they beat the Islanders 2-1. So the Rangers are 4-0 when they go outdoors. Let's make that 5-0 for this upcoming season. And a uh, fun fact, uh, as far as those games are concerned, those four games, Henrik Lundqvist started and won all four of those games. And I'm thinking maybe when we go into, uh, when we're getting close to that game this upcoming season, sometime in February, uh, maybe we'll kind of take a trip down memory lane Try to reminisce, try to remember everything that happened um, in these other outdoor games that the Rangers have played. I think that could be a lot of fun. Uh, the one that always stands out for me is uh, the first Winter Classic game that the Rangers participated in. Uh, they were up 3-2 to two late in that game. Danny Briere got a penalty shot with like a minute left, and Henrik Lundqvist obviously stoned him. Um because that's just what Henrik Lundqvist does. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously the Rangers have had their success there, and I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to seeing that game and seeing how it all shakes out uh, against the Islanders this upcoming season. It's always fun to watch these outdoor games, but it's that much better when the Rangers are involved. Uh, but I figure we can call it there for today. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. And definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.